March 28th in Paris is where the Intel Pentium Challenge took place, opposing the two most dreaded clans of the Northern Hemisphere, the Four Kings and the Arma Team. These clans have perfectly mastered all the strategies of the PC game Warcraft 3. Capable of one-player mode, the game finds its main interest in multiplayer confrontations. Fast, subtle, and intelligent, it demands coordination and a quick mind. Today, these clans have gone to war. Warcraft 3 finds its inspiration in Tolkien literature and also borrows from the visual universes of such great classic games as Warhammer and Dungeons and Dragons. A world populated by elves, dwarves, and orcs. A world where powerful wizards use their gifts for warring purposes. Books, action figures, a board game, and a role-playing game have been inspired by this medieval fantasy universe while waiting for a massively multiplayer online role-playing game. server, managed by the game's editor, allows millions of people to link up across the world through the internet. Player performances are saved and you can check the official ladder ranking of the select few. This weekend's tournament brings an end to the fourth season of the Intel Pentium Challenge, also called the Warcraft Champions League. And for the first time, the final will not be played on Battle.net, but on a local network in a cyber cafe. Players and organizers have converged in Paris. Various web TVs specialized in this sort of event were also on hand for the trip. <laughs> it's a computer game. What we're doing here, Warcraft 3, um, is a computer game. And that is the main difference to all the sports that we know. We know real sports, like soccer, like football, like all this stuff. And we are now broadcasting a computer game. And many people are, are curious about this and are wondering, wow, they are moderating a computer game. But it's, if you compare it to real sports, the only difference is that you need to have a good coordination with your hand and with the mouse, with the keyboard. And of course, you need to think a lot because it's a reaction and strategy games which we are playing. So, yes, I would say um, our electronic sports are comparable to real sports, yes. The WC3L, the event we have this weekend, the, the players are playing for honor. And that's the biggest difference to all the other events which we are broadcasting. So for me, it's really a little bit more amazing that the players identify so much with this tournament here this weekend. And they're, um, I think it's, um, they are so keen on winning this tournament because it's only the best of the best, best Warcraft 3 players from all around the world. And that's why they are here to give everything. And, to show the other teams that they are the most skilled players in the world. And that's what I'm looking forward to, to see the players showing everybody we are the best players in the world. We are at Armageddon, a cyber cafe in Paris, which is a cyber cafe that doesn't have as much room as Gate 104, where the final will take place tomorrow. It's going to be something else. This will be the fourth season of Warcraft 3 League. In the end, there'll be a winner and a loser, and I hope we will win. We've been close a few times, but we've never gotten that one. Because this is the most important uh, clan war that Europe has, uh, and Russia is included, uh, it's, so, it's so important to uh, come out the best as a team. It's just uh, an honor, and uh, uh, you can say that you're the best team for a long while. The tournament's stake is to simply find out who is the winner of this season's Warcraft 3 League. Given the importance that it's taken, since it hasn't gone to LAN, this is for the team's reputation. There's nothing to win, no cup, no prize to win, only the team's world reputation. And it makes the sponsors happy to see their team win. The two clans meet again at Armageddon, headquarters of the Arma team. They're wearing white t-shirts with dark sleeves. The four kings are in black. Today will be devoted to exhibition matches and warm-ups broadcast live on the web. A specialized audience even came over to see them play. 
it. The water elemental in the first row starts to creep here. Now comes to the spot here. You see several footmen, two sorcerers, two seventy supply on the, the archers, and several hunters also. I was interested. I wanted to see how to play. I wanted to see their faces. I actually, they're regular people. I spoke to them earlier, and they're really cool. They are people like you and me, with a certain passion, and I don't see why we would criticize players that are into this rather than that. Like photography, it's a hobby, like any other one. I came to see the best European players play. However, there is a player who is missing. This player is named APM70, but he's also known as dead man. He was recently recruited by our team. Supposedly, he lives in Moscow, and he's 15 years old. But nobody knows who he really is. He's the best player in Europe, number one on the battle net ladder. And he already has an official enemy, Grubby, the number three contender. Normally, Dead Man should have been here. By the last minute, he had a visa problem. So we're in Big Army again because he was supposed to play against Grubby, and Grubby doesn't want to play against him online because they kind of argued. I don't really want to. Please. No, sorry. Dude, if I accept now, it's like it? I'm a pushover. <laughs> you can let me do anything. I cannot accept anymore. I already said no. You play some Marines team with Yeah, but in the first, it's the first time, with... it's the first time yeah, he, has to, he has to be here. Yeah, but the, it's too bad that he's not. Yeah, it's too bad. Yeah, Wait, for him. Why, why you don't play? Just one game. I don't want to. One, one. No. One. Come on, no. Don't be such a whiner. <laughs> It's no problem, there will be enough games, man. We all know that he cheated. He has uh, admitted to uh, using a map hack, an unfair program to see the whole map. And I think once you make a choice to do that, uh, you just waste your chance to uh, be accepted by some people. Some people accept him, but I don't certainly. Like I said, uh, Arma team uh, accepted this uh, dead man into their team. And I feel because he has hacked so repeatedly in Reign of Chaos, and so blatantly, uh, I don't uh, have any respect for him. I don't, certainly don't want to uh, uh, play him like uh, in custom games or friendly games because I'm not friendly with him. Like in all games, there are cheaters. Sadly, there are cheaters that create new programs go through the game security system. Short version, the main Warcraft cheat is map hack, which allows to reveal the entire map and you can see precisely everything by watching the raider down on the left. You can see the opponent, where he is, what he's doing. Obviously, it's an enormous advantage, but it's not necessarily because of that that you will win. If the guy you are facing is 10 times better than you are, if he's faster and he's got more experience, he won't lose because of that. But of course there's cheaters like in every game, sadly. The Arma team has guaranteed that Deadman has stopped using this process. A youthful mistake that he won't make again. More so since the Battle.net server has been put under high surveillance by cheater tracking professional referees. The penalty is intended as an example. The player is thrown out and can never play again on the internet, except if he buys another game and keeps a low profile. I want to have fun, meet the friends that I haven't seen in some time, see the Paris, of course, first time in it. So it's a great opportunity to explore the world and have fun. And concerning gaming, of course, we will prove that we are the best. Sunday. Here are the American players of the Arma team. Not quite awake yet. The four kings are also here, fooling around in front of Notre Dame. Today is D-Day. Both clans are going to the Latin Quarter, where the four kings are here to fight, determined to prove to the Arma team that they're the best in Europe. <laughs> He won a CPL. He's called AT Antox coming from Montpellier. Give a big round of applause. 
Hailing from Denmark, Four Kings Cash. Give him a big round of applause. Raz, it's the first time we get to see him and we're really happy. Coming directly from Los Angeles with his ally. Saber, I'm asking you to give a big, big applause. It's the first time they leave the United States and come to France. They will go against the Dutch team coming from Amsterdam. Here, Smith. Grubby is downstairs and will soon join us. Let's hear it for him. He's alone now, but usually there's two of them. A.T. Blatty. He will go against our Croatian friend from Zagreb, Croatia, Four Kings Zeus. AT short round. Hailing from Stockholm, Curie and Lawn. Four King Fury. The one a lot of you were waiting for from Amsterdam. He will be Myth's ally. And on one to one against short round, he won the CXG. Four Kings Grubby. So, to sum it up, the Warcraft 3 League final between the Four Kings and the Armor team. Thank you. The final will be played in five matches, each divided in three winning rounds. The first match pits the American short round against the Dutch grubby. After an initial score of one each, the two challengers will have to face off on one of the numerous maps which each of them knows practically by heart, Plunder Island. The first blow comes from short round. But Grubby thrusts his hero riding on a wolf to get hold of a magic item at the center of the map. But a wisp, a ridiculous green ball of light and capable of fighting, slows him down by blocking his way. And when Grubby manages to get rid of it, Short Round's elf hero has more than enough time to get there before him and snatch the item. He can only turn around empty-handed. But they'll have to do better than that to destabilize Grubby, who uses the tower creeping strategy. His wolf riding hero, along with four orcs and a few peasants, will attack a gold mine guarded by ogres. He builds two towers nearby as a place to fall back. Having increased his defense potential, he manages to eliminate the monsters and begins to extract the gold. I usually choose a strategy that can uh, that is very aggressive because I like to keep close contact with my enemy so I know what he's doing. Meanwhile, Short Round also gets a hold of a mine, but Grubby's reaction is quick and devastating. He makes it his own after a brief assault and builds two additional towers on it. Thanks to the three mines in his possession, one from the start and two conquered, Grubby switches to the next level. The orc army hurls itself on the elf village and buries it under catapult boulders. Meanwhile, headhunting trolls make axes rain on Short Round's retreating army. The Four Kings win the first match. Yeah. 
They're really going at super speed. It's really impressive. There was that thing there, um, 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 short round's wisp blocking the forest here on third round, but he still loses. What impressed me is when short round took his wisp in front of Grubby to block his forest here so he can't harass. I like to be able to do that, but it's a long shot. Now it's time for the two versus two matches. The Arma team is lining up its pair of Californian players, Saber and Raz. The four kings pit Myth and Grubby against them, comfortable as a duo, as well as a solo. First round goes to the four kings. The second round takes place on the Avalanche map, which has the particularity of having gold mines coast to coast, from the north to the south. Since the beginning of this second round, Myth rushes to smash the boulders blocking his path to this El Dorado. Quickly caught up by Grubby's orcs, the Four Kings duo overcome the guardians of the mine and begin to recover the gold. The American pair of the Arma team will take too much time to react. The Four Kings will rise a formidable army. Two violent clashes will unfold at the center of the map. And even with a good combat micromanagement, Raz and Saber will find themselves quickly overtaken. Grubby and Myth will continue their clearing by throwing themselves on Raz's HQ. And despite reinforcements sent in by Saber, the Four Kings will quickly take advantage and destroy his buildings one by one. It's over. Saber and Raz will forfeit the game. The fact that they can do so many things at the same time, they're so into their thing. For the fastest of them, it's 300 actions per minute, I think. Uh, you can't really tell what they're doing, but it's super quick and totally impressive. The speed at which they're typing, they're managing many different places at the same time. Works for them. Well, once action per minute or how many times you either click the keyboard or mouse, it's not, uh, it's not a direct, um, what can we call, parallel to how good you are. But I'm from 170 to 220 or something like that. I think I'm usually around like 170 or 180 actions per minute. I'm currently 150, not one of the highest, but I think uh, that's just sufficient. Personally, I do between 170 and 220, so it's pretty fast. But there are Korean players who do 440. It's freaky. It's important to win, but it doesn't mean you have to have a high AP actions per minute to win. At the beginning of the game, I spend a lot of time selecting my buildings, one after the other, even if it's pointless, just to warm up my hands and concentrate on the game. So that rises the action per minute rate. Other than that, on average, counting the fictitious action, I'm between 230 and 260 per minute. It's just about how good you use it. You can have 150 APM and still win the players that have 250 or 200 or 300. You can make worse decisions and have a lot higher APM, or you can make, you know, have a lower APM and make better decisions. It all depends. Like Grubby, he doesn't have high APM, but he beats every player. It's a very bad start of the final for the Armour team, who are down 2-0. to zero. The next match has to end in victory. Otherwise, the four kings will have won three out of five matches, and they'll be declared winners. Intox will face Cash. 
Both have the same score. They each have one. And they're now tackling a third round, which they'll decide between them. A match that could seal Arma Team's fate. The two adversaries both playing elves take exactly the same start. Both put down an ancient stand and invoke with it a demon hunting hero. Cash in red battles Intox in green. Intox has impaired Cadge's hero, forcing him on the defensive. This is called harassing. After a few passage of arms, Cadge ends up fleeing. Normally it involves something with great risk. I like to, to keep the, the game on my side, and therefore my game is very risky. So if, if I make one mistake, I normally lose the whole game. But if I doesn't make a mistake, I normally beat my opponent. The first real clash will happen after 12 minutes. Combat focuses on the two demon hunting heroes who obviously don't appreciate each other. Intox in green will manage to outmaneuver his opponent efficiently, despite the presence of three druid bears. The armor team player manages to kill Kaja's demon hunter. He grievously wounds his second hero, riding a white tiger, which flees. Intox terrorizes the ranks of Kaja's army, who makes the mistake of bringing his wounded hero a little too close to the fight. But Kaj doesn't give up. I try to play very offensively and then get the late units. You can get some units early and the other units you can get late. So I try to always take up for some of the later units if that's possible. At the very end of the game, Cadge has all the necessary resources to recruit a giant. A slow creature, but incredibly resistant, who has the power to attract blows. It's an incredible turn of events for Cadge, who's come back from Hades itself. The Four Kings win the fourth season of WC3L. The Arma team has decided to play out the two remaining matches, and the four kings will make the score even worse for them. The day ends with a victory of five to zero, an unexpected and unhoped for result. My job at the team is mostly to schedule clan wars and to make news about the wars, to set the lineup and to analyze our enemies, to um, think about um, which player will be seed on which map and what would be best um, 
which of my players um, is perhaps uh, best in an org, uh, or versus an org player or versus an under player, and then I'll try to seed um, and make a lineup so we can have best chances in uh, the game. And I heard a grubby interview in which he said he closely studied the Arma team game. They did what had to be done, a lot of custom games, just before an event, do private games between them to have well broken in techniques without them being made public. For example, we got Grubby and he's very good against Night of players and we wanted him to play um, uh, perhaps Intox or Shot Round and uh, both are Night of players and they are very bad against Orc players. And so we tried to seat him against the Night of player and we succeeded and so he got best chance to win the game, uh, which he did. And in fact, Grubby nearly wins all his games. Right? The armor team lost. There was the final and they played well. It's really amazing and of course we want to try to do the same thing the next season but it will be very, very hard. It was hard already this season, but um, I really glad we made it.